So this video is going to cover the examples that are not finished inside the handout that I gave you. So the first thing we want to do is be able to add vectors graphically. And on the top of page 114, they give you a vector V, and they give you a vector W, and they want you to come up with V plus 2W. And the other one they want you to come up with is 2V minus W. One of the tools that is available for you to use in the back of the classroom in the ruler drawer, I have what are parallel dividers, and this is going to help us transfer things on our drawings. First thing I want to point out is that I can rewrite the second equation as 2v plus the opposite of vector w. So the opposite of vector w would be the vector that has the same length as w. So in this case, I have a vector that is 4 inches long, but goes in the opposite direction and is parallel to it. So this would be the vector negative w. Other thing is that the vector 2v is the vector that goes in the same direction as v but is twice as long as v. This current vector is 7 inches long. So to make something that is 2v, I would make a vector that is 14 inches long. So this vector right here would be 2v from there to there. Similarly, vector 2w would be the vector that is twice as long that goes in the direction of w. So this one between here and here would be 2w. And with those vectors, I can now add these various pieces. So I'll show you kind of how parallel dividers work. If I want to come up with a vector that is in the same orientation as v, I put one line of the parallel divider on v, and then I can open it up and I can actually transfer that. Okay, and let's say that's not in a spot that you want it, you can take that again and you line it up and you can transfer it wherever you want to. So I'm going to use this one. This is in the direction of V, but I needed to make it the length of V. And if I have no coordinate system, I actually use a ruler. And again, we said that was 7 inches in the length of V. Okay, so that gives me the V. And then my W, I want 2W, so I'm going to want a vector that is 8 inches long that is parallel to W. And when we add vectors, we put the tail of one vector, so I'm going to take the tail of this vector and move it up here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use my parallel divider and transfer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I am going to move it up so I start my vector right here and then I'm going to make that vector 8 inches long so this right here is 2w this vector right here is v and if I want the resultant vector, I go from my starting point of where my V was to my ending point of where 2W is, and that would be my new vector. So I'm going to just use a dotted line, and that would be my final vector, and that would be V plus 2W. Next thing I'm going to want to do is go 2v minus w. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer a vector that's parallel to the minus w and put it up here. OK, 
Okay, and then my resultant vector would be from here to here. So again, let me transfer the parallelism of the W vector. So I'm going to start out here. I want to make it so it opens up. I'm going to have to do a couple transfers to get it up there. So there's one. Let's do another one. Okay. Notice that that's positive W. Well, I want to go in the other direction to get me my negative W. And we know that W was 4 inches. So I'm going to go that direction along this line, 4 inches. So this is 2V, that's minus W. And then the resultant vector is going to be this one. And this would be 2V minus W. <coughs> My recommendation is anytime you are subtracting a vector, you change it into adding the opposite of the vector. Um, and that you label each of your vectors, like I did here, 2V minus W, and then you can get your resultant in there. Um, we will be using trigonometry to come up with some of these once we have the coordinate plane, but you also need to be able to do these um, graphically. So in navigation on ships and on airplanes and stuff like that, they actually use and actually physically draw vectors on their maps or their charts, whatever you want to call them. And they, this is actually a tool that's used for navigation. And notice if you use this tool, it's got one side where it actually has compass headings, okay, and you got the other side that has degree markings on it. So you can actually transfer degrees and then they use this to make parallel lines. So I'm going to pause the video, erase the board, and go to the next section of examples. So in example 416, they're showing you vector notation if you're on a coordinate plane. And a vector is a line segment that has a specific direction and a specific length. Okay? And if they give you vector notation, you can basically what it's doing is it's saying, hey, it starts in standard position, which means it starts at the origin, and then it's going to go right to and up to. This one said that it goes right 1 and up 0. Okay? Any vector that goes right 1 and up 0 is the vector w. It doesn't necessarily have to start at the origin, but it's telling you wherever it starts, go right 1 and up 0. So what we want to do here, 4.16a is in the book. 4.16b, I'm going to show you the work. And all we're going to do is we are going to substitute. Everywhere that it has the vector v, we're going to put 2, 2, and everywhere it has the vector w, we're going to put the 1, 0. So I'm going to write 2 times the vector 2, 2 minus the vector 1, 0. I'm going to distribute. That's going to give me the vector 4, 4 minus the vector 1, 0. And when I do vector addition or vector subtraction, the x components, or the horizontal components, I do the mathematical operations on them. So that's going to give me the, go 3 to the right. And this says 4 minus, actually, so 4 minus 1 is 3. And this one is 4 minus 0, which is 4. So if, let me just draw a coordinate plane here. If I take the vector... That was my original V vector. If I double it, I now have 2V. And then it says to go 1 to the left because of the negative sign and 0 up. That would be my W, negative W. And my resultant vector would be at 3, 
4, and that's what I got for my answer. So you do vector addition and vector subtraction along with scalar multiplication. Um, just make sure the x's go with the x's and that the y's go with the y's. I'm going to pause and go to the next example. Before I get into example 4.18, I want to cover some of the vocab definitions that are in the reading, just to make sure you got those. First thing I want to point out is that they talk about a component form of a vector. So, for example, we had the um, vector v that we wrote as 2, comma, 2. Um, that component, that is the vector notation of it. And we could also say that, hey, this vector goes 2 in the x direction plus 2 in the y direction. Okay? But we don't typically use the x and the y to denote the x and the y direction when we're talking about vectors. They, um, instead of putting it on what we call the Cartesian coordinate plane, we still have a regular plane, but we're going to call this an argon diagram. And the x direction, they use the letter i. And the y direction, they use the letter j. So this says go 2 in the i direction and then 2 in the j direction. Okay. Another way that you're going to see when we use complex numbers that the i and the j come into play. Notice this j up here. Okay. i in math usually means the imaginary number. Okay. Well, in electronics and other sciences, they use the j to represent the imaginary number. Okay. But in math... When we start um, graphing complex numbers, we will use the first component to represent the real component of a complex number, and we will use the y component to map to the imaginary component of a complex number. So there's a reason why um, there's a j used, and that j is because electricians typically use j to represent imaginary numbers. Okay, I just want you to recognize that this i right here is not the imaginary number. This, this is just the horizontal component, and that would be the vertical component. So let's talk about this symbol. It looks like double absolute value bars, and that is the magnitude or the length of the vector. And how do I find the length of the vector? Well, let's look at this vector. It goes 2 to the right and 2 up. Well, it's just the distance formula, where that's your x component and that's your y component. So the magnitude of the vector is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the two components. So that would be 4 plus 4 is 8. The square root of 8 is 2 root 2. Of course, we know that's a 45 degree angle. and we should be able to shortcut that and get the 2 root 2. The direction angle, so here, here's another vector v. It goes 2 to the right and 2 up. It doesn't have to start at the origin. The direction angle is the angle that the vector makes with a horizontal line going counterclockwise. Well, that angle we're going to I'll call it theta. And we already know two relationships here. We know that the sine of theta is equal to the y component, so that was v sub y, over the diagonal component. We called the diagonal component the vector, uh, the magnitude of the vector. And I also know that the cosine of the angle is the x component over the magnitude of the vector. These are the way I, I remember them. And if I want to know what the angle is, I would take the inverse cosine of both sides, or the inverse cosine of both sides, or the inverse sine of both sides, depending upon what information I have. And then I will figure out which quadrant my vector lies in to figure out the SIGN sign okay, that I'm dealing with here. Okay? So 
remember, when you take the inverse sine, it's only going to give you a vector in quadrants 4 and 1. However, you can have a vector that points into quadrant 2. Your calculator is going to give you a quadrant 1 answer, and you're going to have to transfer it into quadrant 2 to actually figure out the angle. Similarly, um, and that's what we're going to do in our example here, you can have a quadrant 3 vector. Okay? For sine, if you do the inverse sine function, your calculator is going to give you a quadrant 4 answer that you're going to have to transfer into a quadrant 3 angle. The trig form of a vector is using both the direction angle and the magnitude. So uh, I just want you to recognize that, hey, I could draw a circle here. And we're going to use that magnitude to represent the radius of a circle. So uh, right now I'm just going to say that r is equal to the magnitude of v. And then the trigonometric form is r cosine theta, comma, r sine theta. What they're telling us is that, hey, r times the cosine of theta actually gives me this distance. R times the sine of theta gives me this distance. So now we are relating our vectors using the length of the vector time and using the angle of the vector associated with it. So now let's do the example 4.18. It says find the trig form of vector 3, negative 4. So the first thing that I want to do is I need to find its magnitude and I need to find its direction angle. Okay, and we're going to do these in degrees. So make sure your calculator is in degree mode. First thing I want to do is I just want to kind of rough sketch it. So negative 3, 4 would be this vector. So I'm going to have an angle that's more than 90 degrees but less than 180. Okay, so first thing is the magnitude. So R is equal to the magnitude which is equal to the square root of negative 3 squared plus 4 squared. And you should recognize that, hey, I have a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So my magnitude on this one would be 5. I know that cosine theta is equal to v sub x over 5. And I know that sine theta is equal to v sub y over 5. And what I need now is I can use either one of these to come up with my um, angle theta. I'm going to use the inverse cosine because I know the inverse cosine is going to give me an angle in quadrant 1 or quadrant 2. So I'm going to have a quadrant 2 angle, so I'm going to use this one and not have to do any conversion. So I'm going to hit inverse cosine of negative 3 fifths, and my calculator gives me 126.87 degrees, approximately. So to write u in trigonometric form, I'm going to write u is equal to r, which we got was 5, times the cosine of 126.87 degrees, comma, r, which is 5, times the sine of 126.87 degrees. So, you need to be comfortable of finding angles if you are given the values of the sine or the cosine and be able to use the distance formula, the square root of the sum of the squares of the components to find the magnitude of the vector to write it in trigonometric form. Okay, If you are given something in trigonometric form, you have example 4.19 in the book. Um, I am going to do another one that's like 4.19, and we're going to take something that's in trig form, 
and we're going to rewrite it in our vector notation. So, for example, if you have the vector z in trig form, we're going to put 3 cosine of 50 degrees, comma 3 cosine uh, sine 50 degrees. And I want to write it in um, that component form. All I'm going to do is do the math that's here. So I write 3 cosine 50 in the calculator. 3 cosine 50. Approximately 1.93. Comma, 3 sine 50. 2.30. And you could plot the vector. Another way you could do it is use your protractor, lay off an angle of 50 degrees, and then measure something that has a length of 3. And you would get the same vector. You'd have something with 1.93 comma 2.30 as your final answer. Again, I'm going to pause and I'm going to go to the next group of examples. So the next two examples are two out of the three story problems we're going to do. Uh, example 421, um, I'm going to draw a picture so we have an idea of what's going on here. I have a river that is going due east, and you need to know your compass directions, at three miles an hour. I have a boat that is heading, s facing 630 degrees west, I mean south 30 degrees west. So let's look at this and what it says. North, south, east, west. It means it's facing south and then rotate 30 degrees to the west. So this is the angle that it's going. Okay, that's the direction it's facing. And when the boat is in still water, it travels at 10 miles per hour. So I have something that's at this angle at 10 miles per hour. And what I want to know is I want to know the resultant vector. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take these, we are going to write them in trigonometric form, and then we are going to do the addition, and the velocity is going to be the number of miles at what compass heading it is going to. Remember, velocity has a distance and a, uh, has a, dis a magnitude and a direction. So I want to turn due east at three miles an hour. So that is r. Well, how long is something that is three units long horizontally? It's three. So I have three cosine. Now we have to turn these compass headings into trig degrees. East would be zero comma, 3, sine, 0. Okay. My boat in still water goes 10 miles an hour. And now I need the angle. Well, from here to here is 30. This is 60. And this whole thing would be 180 plus 60, which is 240. So I'd write cosine of 240 and then the sine of 240. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the calculator or memorize things to come up with these, ang with this, these pieces of information. So 3 cosine of 0, which would just be 3. Remember, that's the x direction. The sine of 0 is 0. 0 times 3 is 0. The cosine of 240 degrees is 1 half. 1 half times 10 is 5. The s and actually, that would be a negative 1 half, so that would end up being a negative 5. The s sine of 240 degrees is negative square root of 3 over 2 times 10, so it would be negative 5 square root of 3. 
I now add these two vectors together and I get my resultant vector, which I'm going to call r, would be 3 minus 5, which is negative 2, and then 0 minus 5 root 3 would be minus 5 root 3. That's, that's how I could draw the vector, okay? But I need to actually come up with the velocity. So the velocity is the magnitude of this. So I'm going to get the magnitude of r is equal to the square root of negative 2 squared plus negative 5 root 3 squared, which is the square root of 4, and that's 25 times 3, which is 75, which is the square root of 79. And we're going to go ahead and approximate that in our calculator. And get approximately 8.89 miles an hour. Okay, and then the next thing I need to do is I need to figure out its direction angle. So I'm going to use one of my two formulas. I'm going to use the inverse cosine formula. So I know that the cosine of my theta is negative 2 over square root of 79. I'm going to use the exact number in here. And if I take the inverse cosine of this, negative 2 over square root of 79, get the parentheses in the right spot, I get 103 degrees. But I want you to realize that, hey, I have to have a quadrant 3 angle. So in order to get that quadrant 3 angle, I can take the 360 degrees and go 103 degrees in this direction. So I'm going to take 360 minus whatever answer I got here to get the right angle. So 360 minus my answer, and it says 256.996, so I'm going to call it approximately 257. So theta is approximately 257 degrees. Okay, now let's figure out how far, let me redraw my map, because that's not going to be the way they're going to want the final answer. So let's look at this. If this is east, this is south, this is west and north, I went 90 degrees, okay, and it, we said 103 degrees this direction, right? So 100, and then I went another 13 degrees. So this is 13 degrees. So the way I'm actually going to write my angle, I'm going to write the information is, hey, I'm going to start south and then go 13 degrees to the west. So the final velocity is 8.89 miles per hour at south 13 degrees west. So here you have to be able to transfer our regular trig angle definitions to bearing directions. The next problem, it says I've got a barge here, I've got two tugboats that are pulling on the barge, one tugboat's pulling at 3,200 pounds force, the other tugboat's pulling at 4,000 pounds force, and I want the barge to go straight to the east. They give me the angle here for the first barge, and I, what I need to do is I need to figure out what angle does the second barge have to pull at with this force to make it basically go east. So what we're going to do is we're going to have an addition problem of vectors, okay, and now let's look at this. If this is a 60 degree angle, this would be a 30 degree angle, okay, or you can call this one the 30 degree angle. And let's kind of look at what I have. So I'm going to put T1 here. I want T1 plus T2 
to equal my resultant. Okay? And what do you know about the resultant? You want the resultant to go zero up and down. Okay? So you want it to be um, zero degrees. Okay? So I'm going to put... Um, so you want... So basically, the x component here is going to be... I mean, the y component is going to be zero. And then the r component is what I'm going to be coming up with. So I know I have to have zero here. That's my theta. So for force one, my x component is 3,200 cosine of 30, so which would be 1,600 square root of 3. And how did I get that? 3,200. The cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. And I did that math in my head. The vertical component is the sine of 30 degrees, OK? Or the sine of that negative 30 degrees. So that would be 1 half times that would be 1,600. And notice my y component has to be negative. Okay. Next thing I know is that the x component here is 4,000 cosine theta. And the y component here is 4,000 sine theta. Okay? All it really wants to know is the, this problem right here. It wants to know when negative 1600 plus 4,000 sine theta is equal to zero. Now, a second part of this problem I can ask you, hey, what is its resultant velocity? Um, and that's not in this question, but we'll go ahead and do that when we get done. So if I want to know what theta is, I look at, hey, I have all the information I need to calculate theta. So I'm going to write negative 1,600 plus 4,000 sine theta equals 0. Move the 16,000 and divide by 1,600 divide by 4,000. I know that sine theta is equal to 16 fortieths. Um, four goes into both of those, four tenths, which is two fifths. So I know sine of theta is two fifths. If I want to know theta, theta is the inverse sine of two fifths. I stick that in the calculator. Inverse sine of fraction two fifths. And I get approximately 23.58 degrees. So theta is approximately 23.58 degrees. Now that I know what theta is, I can actually do the math here. I can put the 23.58 degrees here and write 4,000 times the cosine of 23.58, so 4,000 cosine of my answer, and I get 3,066 .06. And if I want to know its direction, I mean its magnitude in the x direction, I'm going to take this plus this. So 1,600 root 3 times the square root of 3 plus whatever answer I got there. And it is going to be going um, a magnitude of 6,437.34 in the x direction. Okay? So this was not asked. Okay? So, but the you do need to draw it out to kind of realize what you're doing here and figure out how to solve problems. And at the very end, you, can, you actually can take that angle and come back and find this. I've got one more example to do for you. Sorry about it being a long video, but I want to make sure that we have good examples for you to go back to to check your homework. So the last example, we're going to have to do some algebra to calculate this. 
What it says is I've got two ropes pinned to a ceiling. I have a rope that's pinned to a ceiling. And then hanging from that rope, I've got a weight of two pounds. And when I hang that weight of two pounds, I get an angle of 22 degrees on the right-hand side. And I get an angle of 42 degrees on the left-hand side. And what it wants to know is it wants to know the tension on each of these pieces of cable. Labeled the left-hand one is tension one. The right-hand one is tension two. And in order to do this problem, you need to realize that this point right here has to stay stationary. And in order for that point to stay stationary, it has to have a resultant force of zero. So it does not move. <clears throat> okay? And in order to get that resultant force, is you are going to add up these three forces and to basically get zero. Another way to think about it is I can have three forces that add up to give me zero, or I can have these two forces directly cancel out the third force. So I'm going to do the forces to add the three forces that add up to be zero because it's like the other example. So T1, the X component, so I'm going to write T1. And let's think about it. The X component is negative, okay, because it's pointing to the left. So the X component is going to be T1 times the co cosine of 42 degrees. Well, let's, let's think about it. If that's 42 degrees, what is that angle right there? Well, this angle right here is also 42 degrees. 180 minus 42 degrees is going to give me what I actually want. So 180 minus 42 is 138. So T1 cosine of 138. The vertical component is going to be T1 sine 38. Okay. For T2, I get T2 times the cosine. Well, if that's 22 degrees up there, this one is also 22 degrees. So I get T2 cosine of 22. And I get T2 sine 22. The x direction here is 0. So I'm going to put 2 times 0, which is 0. And then the y direction is 2 pounds times the sine of negative 90 degrees, which is negative 1. So this would be minus 2 because it's going 2 in the downward direction. So that plus that has to equal 0. So I'm going to put these in the calculator. So I'm going to write T1 times cosine of 138. So cosine 138. And let's round to th three decimal points. So that would be negative 0.743 T1 on 22 plus 9.927 T2 is equal to 0. That's one equation. We're going to do the sine. That should have been 138. So the sine of 138 is 0.669, 0.669 T1. Sine of 22, 0.375. T2 minus 2 equals 0. And I have two equations with two unknowns. Um, let's solve the top equation for T1. So I'm going to write T1 equals, I'm going to subtract this from both sides. OK? 
Okay, so that gave me a negative 0.927, and then divide by the coefficient in front of here. So let's do that quick math. So I got 0.927 divided by 0.743, 1.248 T2. So everywhere I have a T1, in the second equation, I'm going to put a 1.248 T2. So let's write that down. I get 0.669 times 1.248 T2 plus 0.357, I mean 375 T2. I'm going to move the 2 over, equals 2. Multiply this out and then add this. 0.669 times 1.248, I got 0.835-ish, plus 0.375, is 1 point, I'm going to call it 210. To solve for T2, take 2 divided by my answer, and I get approximately... 1.653. Okay. That's what, okay. That's what I need. T2 is approximately 1.653. Now I want T1. T1 is 1.248 times T2. So I'm going to take this answer, multiply it by 1.248, and I get 2.063. So again, draw your pictures, set up the relationships that you know, solve for your missing values, and in this case, I had to come up with two equations with two unknowns in order to solve. Have fun with the homework on this section.